What is going on everybody? It's Taylor Roberts and welcome to Off The Deep End. Today, we have a patron album request, uh, 30 Milligrams by Cruel Youth. I've heard of Cruel Youth before. I haven't heard any of her music. I just know the name, so I don't know what we're gonna be getting into on this album today, but it's a pretty short album, only seven songs. I think it'd be more like an EP than an album, but you know, we're, we're right on the cusp on between like an EP and an album. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell button so you get notification of when new videos drop. Hop on over to Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Give me a follow. Discord server merch store links are down in the description as well as a patron link if you would like to help support the channel. There's a link down there as well. But let's go ahead and get started on this album because I'm kind of liking the, tr the names of the tracks on here. We got Everything Was Beautiful, sounds uh, very promising. Uh, I Don't Love You, sounds very heartbreaking. And Hate Fuck, sounds very sexy. So let's get into it. I love the buildup on this. Oh yeah, we about to get high. This is what's about to happen. We about to get high in this bitch. Very, very uh, simple track, but it works perfectly as an intro track to the album. Uh, I feel like it sets the tone of the album, it sets the world, the atmosphere. I really loved how bass heavy it was, um, and the way that she uses you know, her vocals um, to kind of just create a an environment. I mean... The vocals are very, at least in headphones, they're very, you know, panned out left and right. So they they feel very far and it, it just gives it the space. Um, and I loved the muted tone, the lo-fi um, edits made on the vocals and the distortion. All of that together just gave this very, it felt very claustrophobic, but at the same time, it felt very expansive. Um, which I, I guess you could say it's like those are two different types of contrasts but they work well together. There's no such, I don't know if there's such thing as complementary contrast. It doesn't make any sense. I think that's like an oxymoron, but that's what I mean. The song was basically an oxymoron. I love that vocal sample there. Lovely, 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 floating away. Never felt 
Ooh, fuck that drop. I love that. Jesus. The drop so subtle, so simple, but so effective at the same time. Those little synth bells in the background. Again, like I said, we get that very kind of muted, disordered tone within the vocals and, and just the overall production in general. You know, this artist kind of reminds me of Kiara a little bit. If you haven't heard of Kiara, she kind of makes the same style of, of music. It's like this like kind of like weird like trap. What's it called? Cloud top trap kind of beats that are a little bit more within the the alternative pop realm. Um and the the thing I love about that type of music is that it, it it feels so weirdly calming in a way. It's it's very just kind of relaxed and and lo-fi and it, it it doesn't feel threatening, but yet everything about it is aggressive. It's like a it's like a baby grizzly bear, you know? It's like you look at it and you're like, oh that's so cute, like I wanna pet it, but you know that shit's gonna fucking eat you if it has the chance to. And it will kill you. That's what it. These, these these songs are like baby grizzly bears. Baby grizzly bear music. Who's Mr. Watson? Hmm. We're gonna find out. I don't need money. I don't need sleep. Everything's funny when it's just you and me. Tired of people asking what I do. You're the only one to fix the stupid shit I've been through. Mr. Watson, I've been cheating with you. Okay, okay, show off those vocals a little bit, girl. Those hi hats. That Thank you. 
I feel like Mr. Watson is her drug dealer. Possibly. Right? Because she's talking about how her favorite color is powder blue. And you take a you take a pill and you crush it. A blue pill. And you crush it. Like Oxy. And you crush it. And you snort that shit. It's powder blue. Favorite color. Mr. Watson's drug dealer. Because she shows up. And Mr. Watson knows exactly what she likes. Her powder blue. <laughs> so I, I a lot of these songs... Uh, uh, I mean... A lot of these songs are... Pretty much, she's like taking drugs in every single one of these songs, which makes sense because it's called the album's called fucking Thirty Milligrams, right? Um, so it's interesting to see just the kind of different environments. It, it's almost like kind of getting into her mindset a little bit of when she's high on these drugs and the the world around her, um, and the way it's affecting the world around her at the same time. Um, it, but it, it comes off as a very kind of simple alt pop album. And I love the influences in the instrumentals, by the way. Like I said, you I mean, that one was like a straight trap beat, right? Um, it had a little bit of a Lana Del Rey flow within the lyricism of the music. And she's just very descriptive in her lyrics as well, which which I like a lot. So yeah, I feel like we're kind of getting a glimpse into her mind of her world when these drugs come in. But these drugs could also be metaphor for people or relationships in her life as well. Ooh. This is a weird string sample. Yes, I love you all the time. All my switchblade words ain't aimed to kill your sweet delusions. I messed up. I confess that I got hurt. Champagne. Oh. She's definitely showing off her vocals in these last couple songs too. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, twerk, twerk, twerk. <laughs> Again, these drops, so simple, so simple yet effective. I also what I, something I noticed about the production and the music is I, I really love the samples that are used in the tracks. Um, just like that one, the very beginning, that old kind of string sample that they've used. Um, and then kind of toward the end in the final chorus as we're kind of fading out with the music before she goes into that little like money rant thing that she had going on. Um, just the, the sounds and the different samples that they chopped up and threw into the instrumental just it gives it a lot more character um and if you don't know like taking sounds and chopping it up and sampling it in tracks is like a whole entire art form in itself like as a producer to be able to to do that um and take work and chop it up and make something completely new out of it it's like it's it's beautiful i love i love samples in music i love when producers take sounds uh, from music that inspires them or weird sounds that they find around the world or on the internet and they just take them and they just blah, 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 chop them up, screw them, throw them in the instrumental, create a new art from it. Um, and a lot of these tracks have had that. And I always forget to heart these damn songs. Let me heart them real quick. 
Everything was beautiful. Fire. Loved it. Alexis, Texas. Fire. Loved it. Mr. Watson, I liked it. Not as much as the other two, so I'm not going to heart it. But I don't love you. Dig it. Oh my God, look at my hair. Look like a fucking cockatoo. There you go. Oh, this is totally like Lana vibes with that sample. Yeah, this is, this is straight Born to Die Lana influence. Such like an outlaw vibe from this. And the 808s. 808s are fucking hitting on this. straight vibe into the song right now. <laughs> Yeah, the, that felt like it was just ripped straight from Born to Die by Lana Del Rey. Heavy, heavy influences there. And if you don't pick up on that, then you must not listen to Lana Del Rey at all. Because I picked up on it as soon as the fucking instrumental started. That vocal chop that, I don't know, what he's saying? Gatorade? Haterade? Something. I don't know. Probably Gatorade. It'd be funny if it was Gatorade, right? Um... But it, yeah, straight Lana influence vibes. I'm going to like it just because of it sounds like Lana and the the influence is just there there's no way there's no way you can't say it doesn't sound like it was ripped from like the tracks that never made it to Born to Die. Um it it just has that that old school hip hop um and and pop element that she she had. Hey, fuck. I have a feeling this one's gonna be my favorite just because I like the title of it. <laughs> I guess that shows a lot about my personality. Oof. Sing it, girl. reminds me of uh that one Rihanna song 
got the same flow. Oh, damn. I hate you every time I fuck you. Fucking beat, man. The production on this album has just been outstanding. I gotta heart this one. But it's just been outstanding. All the, they, They've all kept the same vibe, but yet they're still all individually distinct. Does that make sense? Um, so that means they did a great job of... of creating this world or this environment uh that we've been listening to and and making everything stay within the same planes of the environment um with it just being different enough to pick up on the different types of songs like i said hate fuck i think is a great song the chorus is good hate fucks are are a common kind of thing in in relationships or in ex relationships things like that um there's all kinds of fucks. There's the hate fucks. There's the love fucks. There's the there's the makeup fucks. There's the breakup fucks. There's all kinds of fucks. So many fucks. <laughs> so many fucks. <laughs> uh, how did I don't know? I'm just like spouting out shit now when I, I fucking talk, and I realize I'm probably like bopping my head and my fucking hair, man. It's like fucking bopping with me it's enjoying the music too so you know what <laughs> whatever it's got a life of its own now we're just we're gonna let it enjoy the music as well yes It's like the honeymoon phase is over, right? Diamond days. Diamond 
I think on like the grand spectrum of of the album, this song was a great way to close out the album. It just felt very grand, like a if a finale, um, at most. I didn't like it as much as the other songs, so I'm not gonna heart it. But I do feel it was a good album closer. Um, a very good complimentary to everything was beautiful. Like think about it, everything was beautiful. Uh, diamonds are beautiful. Then the diamond days are over. You know, it's, it's kind of like a you know they they match each other um but yeah a pretty good album although it was it was very very short it was only like 25 minutes but it, you know i don't think it needed to be super super long i don't think it needed to be 10 songs i feel like seven songs was the right amount of songs for this um i really loved everything was beautiful it was a great way to open up the album alexis texas kind of gave us more a bit into her personality or this character's personality in this ep I Don't Love You gets into a little bit more of her mindset. Um, Florida Blues and Hate Fuck, just, you know, more in the mindset, more in the relationship time to things. Um, and then Diamond Days, of course, closing out the relationship and realizing, you know, the good days are over. Let's just move on. Like, forget about it. We had our time. Um, and I, 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 you, there's so many influences uh, that I noticed in the in the tracks themselves. I mean... I have like Adele, like just in the tone of her voice. Uh, the tone of her voice is very Adele. Although, you know, Adele has a very big belting voice. She doesn't belt as much in here, but the tone, the the kind of range of her voice sounds kind of like Adele a little bit. Um, her lyrical flow in her writing is very, very Lana Del Rey, including her beats. is very, very early Lana Del Rey. Um a little bit of Rihanna in there too, with the subject matter and and the the structure of the of the music. Like I said, "Hate Fuck" is very kind of um, that one Rihanna song where it's like, "I can't think about you, but he fucks me so good, and I can't get enough. Must be love on the brain." That one, "Love on the Brain," that's what it's called. I, I was trying to think of the title of the song, and I was like, I just, what the fuck is the name of that song? And I knew if I kind of, like, sang it a little bit, it'd probably come to me. Love on the Brain. It sounds very much like Love on the Brain by Rihanna. Uh, not only in the vocal style and the flow of the lyrics, but also in the production as well. And speaking of the production, again, like I said, I really love the production on this. Just how they were able to keep everything within the same plane, within the same sonic sphere. Um, and kept the same vibe throughout the songs, but was able to differenti dif differentiate, I think I said that right, each song uh, just a little bit, just so it, they all separate themselves. Um, and it doesn't just sound like one big song the whole entire time. So that's great. Again, the samples they used, um, the chopping and the screwing on some of that stuff, loved it. Um, and it, like I said, it had this very, very kind of gentle, relaxing quality to it. But at the same time, there was an ag aggressiveness hidden underneath. If you were to poke it a little more, that aggressiveness would come out. Um, and that was just essentially kind of like in the bass lines, um, the distorted sounds used in the instrumentals and as well as in her voice as well. Um, but if I had to rate this album, even though it came out in 2016... You know, I rate old albums on the Taylor Roberts scale because uh, it's very important. Everybody follows the Taylor Roberts scale. <laughs> um, I would give it. A, I I give it a, a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten on the Taylor Roberts scale. Pretty good album. Um, there's not a lot of misses on it. Lots of hits. Like I said, Mr. Watson and Diamond Days. There's still good songs. I enjoyed them. I just don't. I didn't enjoy them as much as the other five songs on the album. But let me know your thoughts on the album, guys, what your favorite songs are, what you dislike about it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell button so you get notification of when new videos drop. Hop on over to Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Give me a follow. If you would like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down in the description where you'll get access to exclusive album reactions, new music reactions, uh, bonus content, live streams all kinds of good stuff so go and check that out if you got the time the link again is in the description that is all i got for you guys today i'm gonna go and fix my hair because it's 
I don't know what the fuck this is. What the fuck is this? Some shit. Yeah. Anyways, uh, till next time. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll see you then. Hey, thanks for watching Off the Deep End. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like, and share. And feel free to explore our channel and check out some of our other videos. Remember, new videos drop every week. Take care. Thank you.